All right. Good morning, guys. Welcome to a new free market analysis on the channel. Trades by Mao <laughs> for now. Well, well, not for now, but it's the channel. And we can see that we're pushing down, pushing up. We're actually making a nice internal structure here um, on EU. And we're slowly getting up here. You can see that yesterday during New York, we took out basically the supply zone where we're looking at. We took out previous weekly highs. So that's taken out as well. And uh, we just just about missed the um the one hour supply zone I was looking at. We have a 50 minute supply zone up there as well. Uh well first looking at this one didn't sweep anything really. It just took this internal uh, structure lag and then caused the move. Usually you would say like take this entire lag. It's not really the buy sell move that caused the break. It's rather the little lag to the upside that then caused Dan Lord's movement and caused cost price to break below here. And this is a structure we're working with at the moment. This lag to the downside. We know that there's some liquidity up here. Um, and we know that overall there's room to the upside as well as room to the downside. Um, let's start at the daily candle. So what we can see, and that's quite interesting, after we took previous daily highs, uh, sorry, previous weekly highs, let's zoom in a little bit. After price took the previous weekly highs, um, we actually closed with a strong wick to the upside and actually closed bearish. So that's quite interesting because that's indicating that although price moved up here, it's not showing any strong bullish intent. Um, if anything, it's showing a bearish intent. But because we class this as an indecisive candle rather than a directional candle, we don't know where price will be going next. Um, we now have previous daily highs up here. We've got previous daily lows down there. Um, but with this candle, we can anticipate on a potential turnaround and a continuation to the downside um, following this light blue structure and also lining up with the XY. Mm. Wanting to move to the upside. The thing we can't ignore on the XY is that we still have this kind of pricing on this leg. Reddit, whether that's going to happen now or later on, I feel like price might come in here. If not, it will validate the direction because if it doesn't come back and move moves away quite impulsively, it shows uh, where it wants to go in the direction uh, and we can use that for EU. Uh, oh, of course, it will happen at the same time as on EU. So we have to use it in line with EU, but that can confirm our bearish structure that we have here at the moment and that we start to form at the start of this year. Zooming in. <sighs> what we can see is that, as I spoke about, we took internal range liquidity. We got a little push to the downside. If you go to the 15, we can see a little bit better. Um, so you can see that we have that little inducement there and we pushed up, which the upside got down quite impulsively, some correctional price behavior during Asia and London, but then New York came in Friday, pushed down super strong. Then we had a turnaround. And for me, there was this kind of this slack, oops, this break here. So that's why I was looking at this lag. I saw this as internal range liquidity. Um, so I was like, okay, if we take this, then we might get the move from there. We didn't get that. That's no problem at all. Because now we took previous weekly highs and we have a stronger case for shorts. If you ask me. Um, thing we can't ignore is that this leg is quite large. Um, that's a bit of a thing. The other thing is that we do have this low up to this high right now. And that's quite interesting. So 
with that, we can actually do some more. Let me first mark on Asia highs and lows. Um, we've got Asia highs up here. We've got Asia lows down there. Actually, that's already after Asia. So Asia lows are already taken. What's this? Hold on, I'm getting a message. So yeah, um, looking at where we are right now, let's take that off and let's zoom out one more time. So I have my own clarity as well. So liquidity wise and structure wise, we are now looking for bearish price movement. Why internal range liquidity taken premium pricing of the overall range. We didn't tap into yet into the supply zone yet, but we don't need to. We have this, this open area here that's filled up. So we might get the move. Sorry, to the downside right now. Things we can't ignore is that we have this bullish structure here with some clean supply zones at the bottom of that range. Oh, well, no, at the bottom of the discounted pricing of that range. UI, sorry. Um, and because we didn't tap into yet into that supply zone yet, we can maybe see a push down into the demand zone, taking into range liquidity for the minor barrier structure and then get that potential bullish move to the upside. What would that look like on the 15? Let's stop. We have this liquidity there that will be taken out. That Then we have a nice 50 minute supply zone here. Uh, sorry. It's just a language barrier that I start with sometimes. <laughs> So that's actually demand zone. The supply is when you provide demands when you ask. We ask to buy. And here we ask to sell. So demand supply. You can also call it a 50 minute buy zone, 50 minute sell zone. Oh, that's actually nice. Might use that. But supply and demand, everyone knows that. Or at least most people know that. So yeah, let's work with that. So that's that's what I'm looking at really. Um then there's one other thing I'm quite interested in is that we because we took previous weekly highs and I'm gonna accentuate that. Line previous weekly highs. Whoa, that was so stupid. Here we go. Just because we took that, I think that this might be a minor break. And this lines up with the high time here structure as well as with, with this structure here. And then you have the liquidity there. But the thing is that this liquidity is quite low or low inside. No, yeah, it's quite low compared to this lag because this would be the lag we're working with. Um, what I'm going to do real quick is just clear make this more clear for you guys. Um, let's see. We have this low. Let's make it green. Then we have this high, a higher low, and this is then our potential higher high. But it's not a higher high yet. Why isn't it? Why isn't it a higher high yet? Because we didn't reach back into this kind of pricing. And uh, yeah, that's it. As soon as we reach below 50%, I count this as a valid high. And from there, we can expect a move to the upside. Uh, what you can do maybe, but that's for the people. It doesn't fit my strategy. Um, but I know that some people might like to do this. Is that this is your internal range liquidity as well as that one. And they, I saw this yesterday. What's the fit level? This is the fit level. There you go. So, and then they will try to buy from only below here. 
Could be an extra confluence. I don't use it, but you might like it. I thought it looked quite clean with the uh, with the overall idea of this being a internet liquidity point and where you can long. That would look something like this then. Price trickles down, price trickles down. Maybe you get an inducement here, it would be nice. If it trickles down, entry drill from that, um, from this demand zone, or actually this is just an order block. Well, from the, never mind, from the order block there, and then you get the move to the upside. That could be the move, could be play as well. Um, but in order to get down here, we first need to get a move. And what would be the perfect move? Well, from above Asia highs, from this 50 minute supply zone, that's way too big. Um, yeah, it's too big. So what I'm gonna do now, I saw, I figured this out yesterday. There we go. I wish I could add, add text to that. Yeah, let's just use that one. There we go. What's the usual color I use? Hold up. Light one. Not matching. Ah, I know why. Hold up. Hmm. No, I'm wrong. I don't know. Anyway, so what I will do is wait for price to get into that 50% of this 50 minute supply zone. 50 minute supply zone. And then wait for the move from there. I think that would be better. I guess. The thing is. If this is the lag, if this is your lag, you can look for shorts from already up here. And you can't ignore that with this candle thingy there. Let, let me show you what this looks like on the lower time frame. There, look for the candle in one minute. There we go. So it's actually not just that, it's it's this this one. It's like that. And you can't ignore that. So that would be a thing. I just see other people might not use that. <clears throat> but that seems to be a valid play for me as well. So we look quite or we went quite deep into EU. Um but main thing is that we're looking for shorts here, either from this area or from above here. If we don't get shorts, price moves down right away, then we look for longs here. If not longs from here, then we're looking for lower pricing and we might look for longs from here. Thing we can't ignore is that might be a little bit low probability because we reach back into premium pricing of this overall range and we might get to turn around from this area. And that's why I'm looking for shorts in a slightly larger area um, because you don't want to miss that move, right? You might actually want to take a loss, an additional loss in order to get into the right move. So yeah, but of course we need an entry drill for that. Then GU. GU got gonna be a little bit quicker though. Yes. Got stuff to do as well. We took previous weekly highs. We reached back into premium pricing, we created equals to the downside there. We just did the high take and can be moved to there. This is broken. Let's get to that. 
three plus three highs. Those are taken out. You see this. Check that out. Okay. Quite interesting. Kind of a channel there. Pretty much same thing as on EU. Now, yeah. So GU and EU are quite similar right now. Just like on EU. Although we have quite some markings right now on EU. We have this bullish um bullish range and we've got this bearish break there and although i would like to use the entire area i don't know man i'm not quite confident i would ideally just take this one But yeah. And pretty much same for you for G U. So what I'm gonna do for G U is just keep this one on and use this one to know that whenever we reach higher, that might be already reason enough to get give a short um because there's liquidity is laying a bit lower if, if that makes sense does it make sense to me it does make sense to me yeah so like price action is pretty clean it's pretty simple however the areas um that might give us a move are quite harder a little bit harder to spot today I feel like they're a little bit harder to spot, or there's like, because I really want to be part of this move, it's a bit tricky for me because I now choose to trade from a less accurate area. So that means that we might get a fake move, maybe two fake moves, and I'll be entering after the first fake move and then get, get taken out as well um, in order to get in a potential short that lines up with the overall purple structure and overall light blue structure but if we get in and we can get leave a runner then we might be able to get down there and that will line up with the xy getting up here and eventually maybe even up here because that's what we're looking at um so yeah that's that's my idea my Behind it, why is this still here? And uh, I think we're moving with that today. GU area short here, short up there. Sorry, I have to update the previous daily low as well. I think it's this one Monday, Tuesday. and go with that yes so yeah that's it for me for today um i hope it's clear shorts here longs here shorts here eu pretty much same thing shorts here longs here shorts there dxy bit messy but longs here longs here and shorts from there High, low, lower, high, lower, low. Intonation should be taken. Didn't take, um, didn't hit the 50% yet. So that's why we're still looking for potential lower pricing. That's it for today. Catch you guys in the market. Wish you guys good luck and uh, peace out.